Welcome back to beautiful downtown Hudson, Massachusetts for another episode of Wicked Good Food. I'm your host, Matt Williams, and today at Hudson Appliance, we're making soups. I've got three different soups we're gonna make today. We're gonna take some of this garlic and some portobello mushrooms. We're gonna roast the garlic, beautiful roasted garlic and mushroom soup. We're gonna make pretty traditional French onion soup. We're gonna use this loaf of bread here, cut some nice big croutons that get totally soaked up with our soup. And our third soup is we're actually gonna use some leftover potatoes from my house, right here. And we're gonna turn this into an outstanding loaded baked potato soup. So the first thing we're going to do is work on our garlic. So I've already peeled some of this garlic, but I saved one to show you. I'm gonna cut off the dry end here, give it a little tap, just to loosen the skin. Believe it or not, garlic is loaded with sugar. And if you smash it really hard, that sugar gets sticky if you think about honey or something like that, and it makes it more difficult. So I found a little dry spot on the garlic. Don't throw away the whole clove. We'll just remove that little spot. It's a little big, so I'm gonna cut it in half. What I have in this pan here is just vegetable oil. Plain vegetable oil, no flavor. I'm gonna throw these cloves of garlic in it. Just like that, I wanna make sure they're totally submerged. This is gonna go right into the oven. So pop that in now. And so what we're doing here is we're roasting garlic. The beauty of what we're about to do though is that we're going to end up with nice, soft, sweet garlic cloves, but we're also gonna have a garlic flavored oil, which is gonna be the basis of our soup. All right, so moving on to our French onion soup. We need onions, we need a lot of onions. I already peeled a bunch of them for you, but I'd show you how I do this. I'm gonna cut off, for this one, I'm gonna cut off the root end and the stem end. Usually you see me leave this root end on so I can use it to dice, but since we're gonna be slicing them, I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna cut it in half, peel it real quick. And then, you know what, actually I'm gonna turn on our stove, let it warm up a little bit. It's like lightning fast with the induction here anyways. I'm gonna put in about half a stick of butter into our pan and let that start to melt. And then for our onions, what I'm going to do is I wanna cut them into little strips like you'd see in an onion soup. So I'm gonna start my knife at an angle like this so that they're all about the same size. And just go through and slice them. So I'll do another one here. When I get to this point where I start to feel a little uncomfortable with the onion like that, I flip it down like that. It makes it a little easier for me to cut. So I'm gonna blast through these real quick. Now if you don't like big, long, stringy onions and you get an onion that's a little longer, these are kind of moderately sized. What I do is I'll cut it in half this way first, which will make all my slices shorter. We can get these first ones out of the way. Our butter's already starting to melt. This is gonna be a long, slow process of making the flavor of an onion soup. The biggest mistake I see people make, and my students in particular, is that they wanna make onion soup. First of all, they don't realize that our recipe calls for 30 onions, and they end up crying the whole time, literally, because they're cutting all these onions. But the second thing is that they don't take enough time to caramelize the onions. Whoop, lost one. <clears throat> and that's where all the flavor, the vast majority of the flavor of your soup comes from, is from caramelizing those onions. And you'll see what I mean by that as time goes here. So one of the things about onions is that they're mostly water. So as these cook, you're gonna see that this will be almost, not quite half full of onions when we start, but once we're ready to add our other ingredients to it, this will reduce by 60, 75%. All right, so we've got our onions. They all can go right in there. I do wanna make sure my butter's on the bottom of the pan so that it melts. So I can turn the heat up on this a little bit and let it start to cook. Now, we're gonna move over to this pot. So in this pot will be the simplest soup you've ever seen, maybe one of the simplest dishes I've ever made here. So I'm gonna take, warm this pan up, I'm going to add milk to it, add about half a quart or a pint, 
or so of milk. I'm going to save a little bit. I might need some more. I'm not sure. So we had a big meal at my parents' house the other day, and there were leftover mashed potatoes. I threw them in a plastic bag. They're great, ready to go. I did steal some the other day to have for lunch. All I'm going to do literally is dump these in here. Because remember, well, you didn't see me make the potatoes, but the potatoes are already fully seasoned. There's salt in there. There's pepper. These particular ones have a little cream and a little sour cream and some butter in them. So what we're going to do is, now that that's in there, we're going to crank this up and mash it up a bit. So these particular potatoes that I made do not have or do have the skins on them, which is fine. If you don't want that in your soup, then use a mashed potato that's already peeled. But one of the things you can do as you stir it around is kind of stop your whisk and go like that. And you'll see that a bunch of the peels will get stuck. And so if you don't want a whole bunch of peels, we can go over and just knock those out. So this soup here, this loaded baked potato soup is what we call it at school, is the biggest selling soup we ever have. And it, we designed it so that it was something that you could use leftover mashed potatoes or leftover baked potatoes. We'd scoop them out of their skins and then throw them in and mix them with milk. And then all we do is have some garnish of some bacon and some sour cream and chives on top, which is what we're going to do here. But we end up making it from scratch. And we do a similar thing here, but we'll throw our potatoes in the steamer first, get them fully cooked, get them fully soft, and then mix them with our milk. And you can see there's some chunks on in there. And that's totally fine. The potatoes are what's going to thicken the soup. So we're going to use potato starch, but in the form of an actual whole potato that's all mashed, which is going to give us a really nice texture. All right. We can just start to smell these, which is what we want. So the next thing we're going to work on is our baguette. So this baguette here, or this loaf of French bread here, is going to be our crouton. Like I said, we're going to make nice, thick croutons. So you go to a restaurant and you get a crock of French onion soup. Oftentimes it comes to the table and it's boiling and the cheese is going everywhere and the crock is 550 degrees and it'll burn your fingers. So we're not going to do that. We're going to skip that step. So we're going to cut our bread into about one inch pieces. Now if you don't like your bread to get super soggy and you want a thin little crouton, make a thin little crouton. If you want it a little bigger, make it a little bigger. But what we're going to do is we're going to dry these out. And by drying them out in the oven, we're going to get a lot of the water in here. This is very nice, moist, fresh, fresh bread. We're going to get a lot of this water to evaporate, which is going to make this dry. And when you make it dry, it's going to work like a sponge. So when we throw it in the soup, it's going to suck up all the flavor of the soup. But we're also going to top these with cheese. And that way they'll be pre-melted with the cheese so you don't have to throw your whole crock in. And it's a great way to make it kind of family style at home. So we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to finish cutting the bread, get this ready to go in the oven, and we'll move on to the next step, see how our garlic's doing. onions are caramelizing nicely here. So believe it or not, this potato soup is just about done. I have a little strainer here I'm going to use and I'm just going to go around real quick and strain out any pieces of um, potato skin that are in there. And There's some. I don't care about a few, but we'll pull those out just to show you a different way to do that. I did taste this soup. It's pretty darn good. It needs a little bit of salt and pepper. If you don't want to see these black chunks and you don't want any, you know, if you're not going to have any skin in, in there at all, I would use some white pepper. Use some salt. So the mashed potatoes were seasoned pretty much perfectly, if I don't mind saying so myself. But once we added all the milk, it diluted some of that. I'm going to add some sour cream to this. And besides the garnishes, this soup is done. So our heat is off. I don't want it to heat too much now that we added sour cream to it. So we're good here. So I'm going to stick this behind me to hang out. Then we're going to come over and look at our onions. 
So you can see we're getting a little bit of browning on the bottom of our pan, and that's good, but we don't want it to stick too much. So I'm using this high temperature spatula and going through and just kind of scraping it off the bottom. The heat's a little high now. A lot of our water's evaporated, so I'm going to turn the heat down from seven to five and just let it keep going. Now, before we left, I was playing around with the bread. So I got the bread all cut up the size I wanted. I took a little bit of butter and put it on top of each. I just have a spoon here, and I'm going to go into the butter and just use the back of the spoon and scrape a little on top. You could drizzle extra virgin olive oil on there. You could use whatever, you know, use bacon fat if you want. You don't really need any fat, but I like a little bit because it's going to help some of the salt to stick, and it'll also help some pepper to stick. <clears throat> Okay, perfect. So, this is ready to go in the oven. Our roasted garlic is just about done. I turned the heat down in the oven because I want this to be at a relatively low temp. So the oven's now at 250 degrees. So I'm gonna put this in. And I'm gonna grab our garlic out. Put this down right there and you can take a look at it. So that garlic is nice and soft. See how it's kind of bubbling around the edges? That's exactly what we want. Looks beautiful. It's nice and soft. If I were to take one of these and put it on the board and just give it a little mash, you'll see it just mashes into a paste, which is going to be perfect for when we make our soup. So that's just going to chill there for a minute. And we're going to start working on the other things for that same soup. So this, that's probably the most complex soup we're going to make is this mushroom one because we're going to add a lot of the savory elements to it and some aromatic vegetables. So I have some celery here, which I'm going to cut. And I'm looking for about a cup. You can have the leaves in there if you want. This is going to be a pureed soup. If you want it to be super, super fine, pull the leaves out. But the leaves have great flavor. I always save my celery leaves, especially if it's a fresh hunk of celery to throw into a salad or even onto a sandwich. It's really good. All right, so now I'm gonna grab this pot. I wanna grab my rag again. And I'm gonna take and pour my roasted garlic oil into the pan. And I'm gonna pour it against the side of the pan like this so that I don't get the cloves of garlic in there because I'm not quite ready for the cloves of garlic. And that's good. So now we've got roasted, well, that's a little piece of garlic, not the end of the world. We've got garlic flavored oil that we're going to start our soup with. And I'm going to throw in our celery. The pan's not on as of yet. It has the hot oil in there, but we'll go ahead and turn that on now. Always coming back and stirring and scraping the bottom. We're starting to get that color. That brown that you see in the bottom is good, good stuff. But we want that to be on the onions, because if it stays on the bottom, we'll end up burning our onions and all this will be for naught. All right, so our celery's in there. We're gonna add some onion. Like I said, this is going to be a pureed soup, so I'm not overly concerned with the shape and size of my vegetables. I want them to be fine enough that when I put the immersion blender in there, they'll uh, be small enough to get into the blade, but that's about it. So I'm just gonna take this, make three cuts that way, three cuts that way and right in. I'll use the other half of the onion as well. And beautiful. Oops. And I'm gonna let this sweat for a little bit so we can turn that heat up a bit more. So the last thing we're going to add to our croutons is gonna be our cheese. So today we're gonna use Gruyere cheese. It's a, it's a Swiss cheese. It has some of the characteristics you think of of Swiss cheese, but I think it has a more nutty flavor and more flavor overall. So I'm going to cut off the very outside of this one because it's the rind. Now this is awesome. I'm just going to eat that later. But I want the stuff that has a little more moisture in it because it'll be, um, it'll melt better essentially. So I'm going to go ahead and grate that. So we'll come back in a minute. We'll check on our croutons and see if they're ready for our cheese yet. And we'll keep working on this soup. 
and uh, keep watching out for our caramelized onions. All right, so our cheese is all melted. That's ready to go. Bread's in the oven. So the next step for our mushroom soup is to wash our mushrooms, actually. So I have here, these are cremini mushrooms, which are baby portobellas. So sometimes they're called baby bellas, but the real name is cremini. And what it is, it's a portobello mushroom that hasn't grown and hasn't opened up like that. So you don't see all those gills. It's not one of those real big ones. But they grow in compost. They get stuff all over them. So I want to show you what happens when I dump them in here. And just quickly rinse them. You'll see how nasty our water will get. So what I want to do is pull these out of here. And then these are going to go in with our celery and our onions and our garlic oil. So another option you can do with these, especially if you um, really want to concentrate your flavors, is to take your mushrooms and roast them. And what will happen, just like our bread, is it will evaporate. You can see how cloudy and nasty that water is. So if you didn't wash them, that would all be in your soup. So I'm going to go through and just kind of slice these. Not worried really about the shape. I want the size to be consistent. So they'll take about the same amount of time to cook. And this is a soup you can make with any kind of mushroom, but these have a, a lot of flavor. I, r I really like cremini mushrooms for that reason. So these are going to go right in here. <clears throat> but they have a ton of water in them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to let these cook. We've already sweat our onions and celery. We're going to let these cook and let some of that water, eventually it's going to come out and go into the pan, but then it's going to evaporate. So I'm going to turn the heat up a bit more on that. Before I do some more mushrooms, I want to show you this. It's starting to get kind of a tan khaki color, but if you look down on the bottom, there's some really nice brown. Once again, I want to go back and just kind of give that a scrape with my high temp spatula here to get some of that off and reposition our onions. Because you don't want that to build up too much because that'll end up being a spot where it's going to want to burn. And we don't want that. So I'll spread them out again. So I'm going to do my next batch of mushrooms. You can use the same water. It's fine. It's not anything that's going to hurt you, but it's just unpleasant at best. So we'll pull these guys out. So this is a soup that I learned at a hotel I used to work at down in Florida. It was in St. Pete Beach. I think I was in, I was definitely in culinary school. And my job there was I would put together salads and I would plate up desserts. And once in a while I would help out making the soups. And this is one of the soups that I learned how to make. We roasted the garlic a little differently than this. But it was, and we'd use portobello mushrooms, but it was such a huge seller on the menu. And it was great. Theirs was a little more refined than ours because they went through a process of straining it a bunch of times so it was silky smooth. We're not going to do that. It's going to be nice and smooth, but it'll have a little texture to it. Almost like a bisque. All right. So these can go in. Beautiful. So now this is the time that you really need to pay attention to your onions. Like I've said a couple times, you don't want them to burn, but this is when they're going to be apt to burn because there's not a ton of moisture in the pan. So I want to take and grab our bread out of the oven. <clears throat> and I just want to take it and feel the outside is nice and firm. It doesn't give too much, but the middle is still, still a little wet. So we're going to stick this back in the oven. Nothing wrong with serving them like that, but if you do, you throw them in your soup, it's not going to absorb quite as much soup as everything else. So we're going to take another quick break, let this cook down a little bit more. We'll get ready to add the rest of our ingredients, and it's almost time to get Arthur up here and see what he thinks of our soups. All right, 
right, so we've allowed our mushrooms to cook. A ton of moisture came out of them. Most of it evaporated. They squished right down. You can see that those mushrooms that were like that big now have gone to almost half that size. So at this point we're ready. We're going to add our garlic and whatever oil happens to be in there. Give this a little stir around. And this is going to be thickened by pureeing it, but also by making a roux. So I'm going to put some flour in here. And mix it around a bit. We'll do that again. And like with any roux, you want to give it a chance to cook a little bit. As you let it cook, those grains of flour kind of <clears throat> will um, mellow out. It'll lose some of that floury texture. You won't be able to feel it on the top of your mouth. Now taking a look at this, you can see the beautiful color that we're getting. Right? So this is nice and brown. We can even let it go a little bit longer, but we're just about there. So you can see on the bottom of the pan, there's some nice brown stuff on the bottom of the pan. What we call that in the business is fond, stuff that's stuck to the bottom of the pan. We're going to deglaze that with a little bit of sherry wine here. And what you'll see is adding that little bit of liquid will kind of pull off all that stuff that's on the bottom, which is awesome, awesome flavor. And then to this, we're going to go ahead and add beef stock. We're going to add enough to a little bit more than cover the onions, which is going to end up being this whole can or box or whatever you call that thing. Is that a good stir? Oh man, look at that color. Awesome. We're going to add a little bit of time to it because I like time. And that's it. We're going to let this come back up to a simmer and let it simmer for a good 10 minutes to let some of the flavor from the onions get back out into the soup. And then we'll adjust our seasonings with a little salt and pepper before we're done. Now we're going to go over to our oven and check out our bread. So our bread looks perfect. It's crunchy, exactly what we're looking for. Not completely dehydrated yet because we're going to pop it back in the oven after we give it the cheese treatment. So we're going to cheese each one of these with our Gruyere cheese. And it's okay if we, we're actually going to spread it out a little bit and let some of the cheese kind of drape off of the pieces of bread and melt onto the pan. I'm going to go over and give our mushroom soup a quick stir here just to make sure we're not sticking too much and we look good. Sticking a little on the bottom, but that's okay. We'll give it a little scrape as we go. I'm not worried about beating up this soup with a whisk because it's going to all end up being pureed anyways. All right, that looks good for the bread. So we're going to pop this back in the oven. And that won't take too long. We're just going to allow that uh, cheese to melt. So this is looking good. Now to our mushroom soup. Our veggies are all cooked. Our roux is cooked just about long enough. I want to make sure it gets to go a good five, seven minutes or so. Now we're going to add chicken stock to this. This could very easily be a veg vegetarian soup by just adding a vegetable stock to it or vegetable broth to it, but we're going to use chicken stock. And I have some right here. I'm going to pour this right in. As with any roux thickened soup, you've heard me say it a bunch of times, you want to add your cold liquid right away and then mix it so that all that roux dissolves before it gets a chance to thicken. Otherwise, you're going to end up with Roux balls. And like I always say, nobody likes roux balls bouncing around their mouth. <clears throat> okay, so as soon as this comes to a simmer, if I did my math correctly, this should be awfully thick, which is good because we're going to finish this with a little bit of heavy cream. We're going to let this guy come up to a simmer, adjust seasonings with a little bit of salt and pepper. 
We're going to make a little bit of bacon crispy to garnish our other soup, and it's time for Arthur to come up. Hey, Arthur. Hi, Matt. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks again for having me here at Hudson Appliance. I heard we have soup today. We do indeed. We've got three different soups. Okay. All right, the weather's definitely a little colder, finally. Okay. So something that's nice and hearty. So we've got this, which is a loaded baked potato soup. Okay. So it's actually made out of leftover mashed potatoes, believe it or not. Okay. So I'm going to take, like you would a loaded baked potato, and I'm yeah. going to scrape a little bit of sour cream right in the middle, like mm. that. And then I'm going to hit it with some bacon. You like bacon, right? Oh, yeah. Bacon right on there. Nice and crunchy. And then we'll hit it with a little bit of chives. Nice. Quick and easy, but like a baked potato, more or okay. less. Okay. All right. Then, here, we've got French onion soup. So see that color? Oh, that Nothing artificial good. in there. That's just taking our time and letting the onions caramelize. All right. Check this out. So you guys can see at home the little kind of trailers of bread on there. I mean, of cheese. So this is Gruyere cheese. Actually, put that in the bowl first. All right. Bring it over here. And we'll put it off to the side and ladle our soup right in next to it. And then kind of move that back to the middle. Check that out. That's just going to suck it up. And it, absolutely. So that's, that's a little different way than throwing it under the broiler and melting yep. all that cheese. All right. So the last soup is one we have to finish. So let me move this out of the way. And so this is our roasted garlic and portobello mushroom soup. Mm. So you can see it's relatively thick. We've got the chunks. But this is going to be a pureed soup and a okay. cream soup. So right. I'm going to use our little immersion blender here and give it a little buzz. What do you think? Wow. So if you want, if you want it to be really chunky, you could stop with something like this. Okay. Or you can let it go a little smoother. We're going to let it go just a little smoother. It smells wonderful. It does. And so by tilting the pan a little bit, it makes it a little harder for you guys to see. But that way we're not shooting soup out because our immersion blender is actually completely immersed. So the last ingredient we need in here is this, which is some heavy cream that I warmed up a little bit so it doesn't cool down our soup. That's almost a cup of heavy cream. Give that a little whisk. See how that lightens the whole oh, thing yeah. right up? Oh, it smells good too. Oh, it's awesome. It's one of my favorite soups. Yep. So, if you want, go ahead and try the baked potato one while I put this in here. Tastes exactly like a baked potato. Well, that's what we're going for. Isn't that kind of cool? Oh, it's very I tasted good. that one beforehand. Mm. And so, go ahead and get in here. You should be able to break off a little piece of the bread if you want. I'll break one off for you if you want. Mmm. It's almost sweet from allowing all the sugars in those mm. onions to caramelize. Very good. Very good. And the bread's nice and soft now too, huh? Just yeah. absorb that right up. Sucking up all the juice. All right. And then last but not least, I hear you're a mushroom soup guy, so I hope this, oh, meets, yeah. this meets muster. And you get that little hint of the garlic. Mm, that is. Now that is wicked, wicked good. good. 